everybody. How's it going? I hope you've all had a very good week. I've had a very mixed week, let's say. It's uh, been a lot of ups and downs. First off, let me apologize by saying uh, I am sorry. I am no longer going to be doing uploads on Mondays. The reason you guys didn't get one this Monday is because uh, I had to attend a funeral um, from my grandmother on my stepfather's side, um, which was awful. And that was on a Saturday. And uh, if you guys think about it, I have to make the videos on the weekend to get them out for a Monday. And I've had to say a lot, and I've had to say no to a lot of things because they're on the weekends, um, because I don't have the time to go out and do anything on weekends. So what I'm going to do is move everything now into Thursdays or Fridays. Uh, I'm really leaning towards Fridays. I think that's a good day to do it. So you guys will be getting videos every Friday now. Uh, it'll take a lot of tension off of my life on the weekends. Um, this just becomes a little easier on me. So hopefully that doesn't cause any problems for you guys. So no sponsor this week. However, I do have some fun stuff out there. Um, if you guys want to take a look, we did create some more merchandise, including things like this fancy new hat I'm wearing, which I've already gotten dirty because I've been wearing mine for like a month already. But we have some really cool new hoodies, uh, a beanie, some hats, some really cool sweatshirts, including a pink one because I think it's pretty cool. Kim definitely loves hers. Uh, so go over to the shop, have a look. Uh, if you want to get something, that would be awesome. It obviously supports us. Uh, if not, no worries. We love you just the same. And uh, so let's get on with this week. Let's get into the good news this week. Now, for those who have no idea what these pieces of wood are, these are the corbels in the house. They're the little upright bits, kind of like, I think if you hang a shelf like a bracket, has the L. That's exactly what these are. That's what they are for. Uh, they're support structures for the mansard roof. This here is an original. This came off the house. And what was, and this is exactly what was used as the template for this magnificent piece over here. But let's start with the original. So. You can see all the details here and how truly beat it up it, uh, it is, <laughs> including that piece that just fell off of it right there. Um, so you can see it's it's just kind of worse for wear. This would have gone here. It's the part with the lines there. And uh, yeah, it's not doing so hot. And we were full on just missing one of these off the mantered roof. So these had to be replaced. Not all of them, of course. Most will still be original, but I had three of these made. Uh, so I talk about my historic carpenter, Eric, who does a lot of things. His daughter is actually the one who made these, Claire. She did a tremendous job. Look, look how absolutely stunning this is. Uh, you know, I mean, this is two separate pieces. I actually think this is four pieces of wood. She glued all that up. Yeah, I mean, it's really just stellar work. So. This is quite exciting. I'm very excited to get these back up on the master roof. Of course, I have to put all the wood protection and stuff on them. These are made of cypress, so nobody thinks they're made of pine. These will stand the test of time. And they're gorgeous. And because I think it's hard for anybody to get size of scale for something like this, you can just see how big these corbels are. I mean, that's a typical spray paint can. So I think these don't really change anywhere I've ever been in the world. Spray cans as a spray can as a spray can. So I think it's a good judge to show you guys just how large these corbels are. And of course, intricate and beautiful, and I just can't wait to get them back up. So that was something I'm very excited about. I'm so, so happy to have these. Also, other than some of the soffit boards, which are just the flat boards that go around, uh, like the gutter box and things like that up on the Mansa roof, I now have all, all of the replacement wood for the Mansa roof which is super exciting news. Now, if I can just get it all painted and everything will be in uh, better shape. Uh, there's also a problem with the lift. So the lift hasn't been working recently, which is why you guys haven't seen me up there very, very often recently. But I am trying to get it repaired. Uh, it's just hard to get somebody who will um, come over and have a look at it. Um, so fingers crossed we can figure that out soon um, because I really want to get at least some of them answered done. Uh, before we shift into winter, which is, uh, you know, coming pretty soon. And then in the next bit of news, before we get into some actual work, I wanted to show you guys this new nifty tool I just received, or I just bought because these things are expensive, so I'll just save up for it for a minute. Uh, this is a Cobra speed heater. It's an infrared paint stripping tool uh, that heats the paint. Paint gets warm, 
you scrape it off with these nifty scrapers here. But from what I've heard with these things, um, the idea is that unlike a heat gun, this doesn't get as hot. Uh, although I can assure you it does get plenty hot. Um, but it doesn't get hot enough supposedly to uh, vaporize the lead, which would release the lead vapor into the air. So this is supposed to solve that problem. It's also a very quick solution for getting paint off. And uh, you can see these things are a bit dirty. I've already used it, so I already know what it's like. And it is 10 times faster than uh, the stripper on certain types of paint, specifically lead. Now, that doesn't mean that I've given up on my trusty Cooper's Strip Club, because I do really love the stripper that I use. Um, this is faster, sure, however, this will damage your wood a lot more than this. Uh, this I've, so for interior things, Cooper's my go-to. For exterior things or things that are just particularly stubborn, I'll use this and try to be very light with it and then go to Cooper's. Um, because again, this is, you can burn your wood pretty quickly with this. It, <laughs> it, I mean, it makes life fast for getting the paint off, but you can really damage some stuff. So I think this is a fun tool. It, it definitely is a lot faster than what I was using. So let's go ahead and get into a time lapse of me using this on the side door, the door we use the most here in the house. And uh, the results are pretty, pretty awesome. So here's the door. I've got most of the paint off, but of course I had to stop because this is right next to Kim's desk. And so uh, she doesn't like the smell of the paint coming off and I don't really blame her. So I have to do it on a day that she's away to finish this up. Oddly enough, this door, out of all the doors I've touched so far, is the only one I can see evidence of having some kind of varnish or something, some kind of finish on the wood as opposed to it being painted. I can get a pretty good glimpse of it here. But you can see, yeah, it looks like there was something on it other than paint. Um, so that's the way I'll be restoring this one. So this will be one of the only unpainted doors on the house. And the wood grain is really, really nice. Of course, this is still a curly pine door, which is pretty amazing. So it matches the ones on the interior of the house. But yeah, here's that evidence of that. Uh, I don't think it's shellac. I'm not quite sure what it is. I will have to hit it with some kind of denatured alcohol and see kind of what's going on here. But certainly a huge difference from the terrible looking paint and this beautiful wood grain. And there's Atlas, say hello. <laughs> For the next thing I wanna use that speed eater on is actually this door here. I've already taken the door off. You can see the hinge there and the hinge down there. Of course, this has been blocked off because the door, as you guys will see here in a minute, that was here was an absolute wreck. There was no glass in it. Uh, one of the styles off the side was broken off or almost just hanging by a thread. So it was not long for this world, and I thought I was going to have to completely replace it. Um, so let's see if we can get it back together where it is at least a solid piece of wood again. Also, before we move to the door itself, I did want to show you guys some of the weird features here. Now this is the hinge side of the door, so you don't open from here. It kind of closes in on this part. 
Um, there's this little switch here that's right into this wire. Uh, I'm imagining this is some kind of security system or something. I've never seen that on any of the doors in the house. Uh, this not being an original doorway in this house. This used to be a window and they added this in the 20s. Um, there's a nifty old doorbell here. Just a very odd looking little switch. It's like a push button for a, a light switch, like an old school light switch, but there is no click to it. So if anybody has any idea what that little switch is for, if it's a security system or I don't know if it rang a bell or what exactly it was for, let me know uh, down in the comments because I have no idea. I've never seen anything like that on any of the other doors in the house. It doesn't exist anywhere else, but here it was a thing. Uh, and I never really messed this door until about a day ago. So uh, interesting. So I've labored over this door quite a bit and we're getting closer to a completed door. As I told you guys before, this was the single worst door in the house. And you can see we've repaired a lot of stuff here. Uh, this entire style was completely falling off, which is why it came off in the time lapses and why it had to be reattached. I've got it in there not only with glue, but also with screws. So this is actually screwed through. I have three screws in each of these. Uh, except for this one because I can't, I can only put one screw through because of where the door hardware sits. Uh, if I put two more than that, then I can't get the door handle in and uh, that wouldn't be good. But it is solid, it is secure now. This still has, uh, in my opinion, not a great gap to it that is still bigger than I'd like it. Uh, it's sealed there, it's pretty good. However, this was, this gap was about a quarter inch thick. Um, <laughs> it was an absolute mess. Um, and this side of the door specifically, I don't know about the other side quite yet, but this side of the door is the outside of the door and so it will be getting painted. So all of this is gonna get wood filled in here, uh, including these holes. You might've seen me 
uh, put screws in here and that was to put clamp here to squeeze this closed. So if I have these little holes on the side, it doesn't really matter. It is all gonna get wood filled and cleaned up the best it can possibly be. But that new Cobra speed heater that I got, the new tool I have, uh, does a really great job of getting a lot of the paint off. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful though because it will char your wood a little bit. Uh, however, I've discovered if you sand this after the fact, uh, it comes off fairly easy. So it's not a permanent thing unless you, I guess, hold it there for a very long time. But uh, that was a pretty good burn mark there and it's barely there. So I'm pretty happy with it and it definitely has speeded up and it's definitely sped up this entire process because this used to take a long time to get any of this done. And here I have the little divider that goes in the middle here to break up the window, much like that door there, except for this one's a lot more narrow or thin. And uh, I still gotta get that glued back in there, but that's not a problem. I can place it in and wedge it back in. But for the most part, I'm happy how the door's turning out and it'll certainly be a lot better looking than it currently is or currently was. And I'm pretty sure I told you guys this in the past, but just in case you don't know, the reason I'm working on these exterior doors and windows at the moment uh, is because winter is coming. I have a new HVAC system and I'd rather have a lower heating bill. So I'm trying to secure as many things as possible. Even though I don't know, I think, even though I don't think I'll take the wood that's blocking this door off at the moment, uh, having this door on will stop a lot of the cold air coming in. Um, this door had no glass in it, as you can see, and was really busted, broke it up. And so the only thing keeping out the cold air last year was a piece of plywood that had gaps all around it. So it wasn't very effective. The big idea is to keep this place as sealed up as humanly possible. That way my gas bill is a lot less than it was last year because it got out of hand last year. And uh, I certainly need the money for other projects, so let's not spend it in gas. So I'm uh, desperately racing to seal up as much of this basement as humanly possible. There's some squirrels up with that tree going crazy. But as I was telling you guys at the beginning of the episode, we have a little bit of a problem, uh, a bit of a catastrophe, let's say. Um, so let me show you what's going on with that. And this is the main problem right here. Uh, it might not look that deep or that big, but this hole goes about three or four feet that way and at its lowest is probably about four feet deep, which is a big, big problem. Um, of course, this is nowhere near my house. For reference to the house, is quite far away. So a sinkhole this far back wouldn't be a problem, except this is right where my sewer line is. This is the clean out here in the back of my yard. Okay, we've been having a little bit of problem with my sewer recently, uh, actually since the flooding a few months ago. So how our sewer system works is the gutters all feed into the system. And of course the sewage comes out the system, all the water, wastewater, all that stuff comes out into one pipe and heads out the back of the house. Now I've redone all the plumbing on the inside of the house and the original water line coming into the house. Those are all new. This is the last bit of piping that we have not touched yet. And in the last two months, as the storms are coming in, we've been getting a little bit of the water backing up into the sewer system and coming up into the basement, which as you can imagine, isn't good. Uh, it hasn't been happening terribly frequently, but if we get enough rain because the roof in the, in the because the roof and the gutter system is all connected to that, it all comes back and it will overwhelm the system. So we had a guy come through and scope the pipe. It took a while to get anybody out here to even look at it. So that's why this has been uh, an ongoing problem for a while, because it just took somebody to get, just took a while to get somebody out here. But they found not one, but two collapses in my pipe. <laughs> Which is great fun because that means that they're gonna have to take out the entire pipe and replace it. And the pipe is about, oh, I don't know, three and a half, four feet deep, uh, maybe deeper in the back. Um, so it's a lot of digging, it's a lot of work, and therefore costs a lot of money. Um, money that I had just gotten in from the sale of the hoodies, um, which I was very eager to give to my guy to get the man's roof done. But right now, uh, it's imperative that we get this fixed. I can't have sewage coming back up into my house. <laughs> it's not a good look and it's not great and it's it will eventually damage the house. Uh, we've kept it under control, but it can't persist this way. And unfortunately, I have to get this fixed. There's no way around it. Um, as much as I want to get the mansard done and that's been the goal this entire time, we've also been having issues with the lift as well, which is why you guys haven't seen me up there. It puts me in a really tough spot because I've, I've now I've got all of the pieces of the mansard roof here 
uh, almost all the moldings done. I just need some of the soffit boards and, and essentially I have it in the entire mansard roof as far as the woodwork is concerned, inside the house ready to go. And it's just so frustrating to know <laughs> that I can't go and work on it and get it done. The sewer and, and the lift being goofy are both really holding me back. And uh, as I've told you guys many, many times, I'm not made of money. So uh, a $10,000 um, hiccup, let's say, um, well, I think it'll hold just about anybody back, but it, it really hurts us because uh, it takes me a while to save for these, these projects and to, uh, to come up with creative solutions to, to make money to make this all happen. And uh, yeah, it just stings a little bit to know that I can't get to getting the, the hat back on my, my beautiful girl. Like I just wanna see that part done. I think it, it really means something for not only myself, but for the neighborhood. And I, I just need it done. <laughs> You know, we'll make something work out, whether it's it's now this fall or if it's something that happens in the spring, it will be happening. It just kind of when we can get it really going. But until then, I'll trudge along on the work that I can do, on the stuff that's down here that, that I already have all the tools for and all the pieces for, or it's 50 bucks to get it done, you know? So, you know, as you guys have always said, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, so I'm just doing it one bite at a time. So that is the episode, guys. I hope nobody minds the whole Switch to Fridays thing. Uh, it definitely is doing a lot of good for me. Obviously, you know, be able to spend the weekends uh, with my family and friends and not miss as many events as I have been missing. Uh, I've missed way too many kids' birthdays, uh, and I really need to stop doing that. So, so thank you guys again, as always. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and an even better week. I will see you guys again next Friday, and hopefully we'll get another live stream going soon. I'll check Kim's schedule and we'll let you guys know about that. Uh, comment below if you guys want another one of those. We really enjoy doing them, so. See you guys, bye-bye.